Greetings! I'm Shad! That's right, check it out! The Shadiversity plushie is now available! It's available! Oh my god! We got an official Shadiversity plushie! Look at, look at, look at this guy! This is a very accurate, very accurate depiction! They're available for a very limited time, so you can get one or secure your one now on Makeship. Link in the description. And, uh, and, like, why would you not want a Shadiversity plushie? It's so cute! Check it! I just, I don't know why. You look very handsome. Shadowverse. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I'm here at Castle Koch. It's spelled C-O-C-H, and uh, I might be butchering the pronunciation. Koch, Koch. I'll do my best. Now, it actually means red, and it has also been known as the Red Castle. And you kind of see a red hue with some of the uh, stonework there. This thing, look at it. It is stunning. So in regards to the external design, this is a dream. It's so beautiful, with only a couple of little historical, uh, historically dubious kind of additions on the reconstruction. But where things get really interesting is on the interior decorating that uh, was chosen for this castle because it's still in great condition. Uh, but to do that, of course, we need to go inside the castle and take a closer look. So I'm inside the banquet hall of Castle Ko, and this one actually is quite impressive in how authentic it is. I'm speaking softly because it echoes a lot in here and I don't want to get in the way of the other people visiting the castle, but this very well could be a uh, 13th century banquet hall with only one or two little oddities, but one of the, some of the things that is perfectly accurate is what they've done here. So the, the actual stone has a plaster over top and then they paint stuff on top. And what they've done, they've actually painted brickwork and then they've painted patterns on that brickwork. And this kind of painted brickwork is all along the walls. And then above that brickwork, we have murals and paintings, very religiously inspired. These ones look to be of certain saints. And then crossing over to the roof, we have more painted patterns all along the wall, even on the main tie beam and king posts, as we can see right here. Something that is not accurate to the medieval period is actually all the portraits. Uh, instead of hanging, you know, paintings on the walls, well, they usually just paint directly onto the walls itself. Another interesting kind of sight and accuracy, even though this room is probably one of the more accurate in this whole castle, is the furniture. This chair here is an interesting bit of both accuracy and inaccuracy. The overall shape is very accurate to a medieval style chair, but with the people who were remaking this castle, well, a lot of the surviving medieval furniture, all the paint had faded away, and so they've polished it up to reflect an aesthetic of about the 19th century, where furniture was kind of polished timber. And yes, it looks nice, but if you're actually looking at this style of furniture, especially fancy chairs, well, in the medieval period, as we saw at Caerphilly Castle, if they were fancy chairs, they were often painted. Another great detail I love here is the cushions that they have on the window alcoves. We see these kind of, you know, ledges on many window alcoves on castles, but this is a great representation of, one, of what one might have looked like in pristine condition and so it becomes a very comfortable little place to be able to sit with good light. Now, the windows, they might be a little too big to be accurate for a fortified castle, but one of the features that I do really like are the shutters, the internal shutters right here. Not every castle actually had a glass on them. Oftentimes, they didn't have any glass at all, so how would you protect yourself from the elements? Well, by shutters, and so if you didn't want the wind getting in or it got too cold, you would simply close the shutters and that would protect you from the outside. And oftentimes they had no glass in them at all. But other times they actually did have other types of coverings, such as oiled cloth even. And it's not to say that there wasn't any glass work in the medieval period, there absolutely was. And if it was, it was often like this, kind of segmented into patterns. 
So this room here is a really interesting example of that kind of blend between a 19th century aesthetic or interpretation of what they thought medieval interior design was like. It still looks absolutely beautiful, don't get me wrong, but some of the things that look a bit not necessarily medieval is the wood panelling. Now, there are some cases of wood panelling that I've seen in medieval art, but amongst all the different types of interiors I've seen, wood panelling is very, very rare. I've seen like three to four cases of it. And it usually is actual timber, not painted wood panelling. And so this type of wood panelling, especially with the embellishments up at the top, see how it's got like a crenellated embellishment at the top? That's more of a Renaissance kind of style of wood panelling and later. Now, it's not to say this room is not stunning, because it really is. It is absolutely beautiful, especially with all the details up here on the ledges and the type of barriers in front of the windows. And look at this vaulted ceiling. <laughs> like, it is truly, truly immaculate. And so, again, this is a great inspiration for perhaps a fantasy setting where you really have all these kind of blending of styles and it's clearly inspired by medieval times. It's just not perfectly accurate. And this is the type of style we're probably gonna see a lot of inside the interiors of this castle. Here's an interesting detail of what they've added to this room and it's actually what they've painted on the ceiling. Do you see how they've painted stars? It was actually a, somewhat of a, a trend or it appears more than once, should we say, in the murals and paintings that medieval people did to decorate their homes to paint stars on the roof to make it look like you're looking up at a night sky. So that actually is a medieval style. So we're in one of the side bedrooms of Koch Castle here, and it's another great example of more medieval style patterning on the walls, where they paint either fake bricks with patterns on the bricks, and then they have murals and designs. Look at the painted patterns on the roof, and wow, there's even the Tudor rose on the roof as well. This is actually beautiful and it's a good representation of a medieval bedroom with perhaps one interesting little quirk or or a couple there's a lot of windows in here now you can get away with windows like this facing the bailey and so yeah you could actually do that but some of these windows here and here they're facing the outside and they're a little too big you would actually expect them to be arrow loops for a proper defense a good example, I like the windows right here. These actually open to arrow loops. And do you see how thin they are? They don't let in nearly as much light. Uh, the furniture is an interesting kind of thing where some looks medieval, some looks more later period. Like this chest here looks more medieval style. This bed, not so much to my understanding, though it does have rope kind of, you know, under thing holding the mattress. You can just imagine like having a warm fire there, there's tables to be able to sit, see your reflection, bed, and uh, makes you wonder how many people lived here during the medieval period exactly. Again, it could have been a whole family, depending on how many people actually occupied the castle, if the Lord had a relative and their family living, like a brother or or who was not set to inherit the castle. But this room is actually pretty good so far, the interior design is a bit more accurate to medieval period than not. Even though it's not perfect, it's closer to medieval and it's really cool. Okay, this is one of the upper rooms of the primary tower and it is stunning. And again, this is an extremely medieval style room. I'm not kidding. Like, like the patterns and designs and colors, I'm seeing very little very little Renaissance or later uh, aesthetic design. I mean, take a look at the, oh wow. Now maybe the mirrors at the top, that's hard to tell. I would say that's probably not fully medieval, but the paintings in each one of these kind of square sections, yeah. Though the paintings themselves don't have a medieval kind of uh, um, style. And so in medieval painting it has, an interesting style to the proportions and stuff where the monkeys actually are a little higher quality than what you'd usually find in medieval artwork. That's one of the things that floors me about this room, like really, is the furniture. This is such 
a glorious representation of a, a noble medieval bed. So, so this would be the bed of a nobleman, someone rich, basically. And look at the color. Look at the painting that they've done on this. This is gorgeous. And I've actually read that this is based off of a 13th century bed. And so very accurate. And, uh, and again, it's not just polished timber like you, you, know, you see in later periods and everything. It is painted. And look at the chairs as well. And, and something that honestly floored me. I'm not sure how comfortable that chair would be though, but something that floored me is this, I think it's an amwar, amra. Look at the design and painting on it. Absolutely gorgeous. And that's what they would look like if you were rich and in the medieval period. Like, do you see the level of color and pattern work there? This is stunning. This is incredible. Oh, I'm in love with it. This is such a beautiful room. Okay, so small little things I have to nitpick, okay? We do have larger windows facing the outside, which is interesting because we have a larger window and also a narrow loop right next to it, when really you would want them all to be arrow loops unless you had windows facing the inside of the bailey. Get away with something like that. Now, it's not to say there weren't exceptions with larger windows facing the outside, and this is high enough, so maybe, yeah, you can get away with it. But also, like, in terms of the details, see each alcove out has like a dedicated pillar built into the stonework, and these are pointed arches, so it's gothic in design. Like, uh, and then how the fire just naturally sits in one of those arches, right? <laughs> this is... This might be my favorite room, honestly, in terms of its accuracy, but also the furniture really kicks it over the edge. This is unbelievable. I am in love. This is amazing. See the patterns, how they're in squares along the walls here? Very, very medieval. So in terms of medieval pattern design, they often repeated a lot of shapes and images and stuff. This goes the same with the uh, armoire right here. You see how a lot of squares, cross hatching, as well as repeated kind of imagery. That's a very medieval style and aesthetic. And we see like, look at the flowers. Look at the flowers right here above the thing. Repeated images, and usually they'd, they'd be able to paint these with stencils. They'd actually have a stencil, and uh, it could be made out of leather or even a thick type of parchment, and they would have that thing and they'll paint over it and stencil on the pattern. There is a little bit of a giveaway in terms of authenticity, where in the medieval period, see this like square patterning, everything? That would be painted directly on the plaster. These, as we can see from what's being uh, falling off, it's actually wallpaper. So you can't really tell if you, <laughs> you couldn't see the wallpaper peeling off uh, over there. Um, again, so yeah, not wallpaper, it'll be painted. And their version of wallpaper were hanging carpets. And it's funny, like, as great as this is, this is beautiful, I love it, right? I would love to see a pristine kind of depiction of a castle that shows wall carpets or hanging brocades, tapestries and things like that. Um, and they were very, very common. And so it would be great to see like an authentic representation with that, because I've never seen that, but then this is rare enough. And to see it in such pristine, gorgeous condition, oh my gosh, this is, this is becoming one of my favorite castles. What, what is almost frustrating about how great this is, this is great, right? It really demonstrates how little we see an authentic kind of medieval decoration. Where in film depicting the medieval period do you see rooms like this inside castles? Think about that. How often? You know? And so, oh, like, it's like Hollywood ha has a different medieval style in their head that they think, ah, oh, people, that, this would just look better for people. Instead of trying to depict it like what we think modern people would appreciate in design, how about we be more authentic to the, how accurate it should be? because uh, it looks phenomenal. Now, you have to bear in mind, in terms of the color, right? This is all a sign of incredible wealth, okay? Because 
the average poor person, yeah, they might be able to whitewash their homes, but hiring a painter, because it would take a, a, like an actual talented painter, especially these murals and stuff, to do all this work. And then getting access to the pigments and the colors of the paints, also very expensive. So this is a huge sign of incredible wealth, and many nobility would opt to trying to do that to display it, and also why a lot of clothing was colorful on top of that. So I'm standing in the winch room, which is probably referred to as the windlass room, and this is where the portcullis gets raised. We can see the windlass right here. Now, I'm not certain this is what a medieval windlass would look like. I've never seen an accurate one for a point of reference. It's all very, like it's all cast iron by the look of it which makes me lean not so medieval. They did have, you know, cast iron from blast furnacing, but that's late medieval stuff. Windlasses could have very well been made out of wood more often, with certain components made out of forged iron would have been more common. But aside from that, this is gorgeous. See, because you could forge these links and chains and stuff. And this is a beautiful reproduction of a medieval portcullis. So it's actually thick wood, braced with iron, with big iron kind of rivets throughout, and something really, really awesome, right? When it is lifted into place, look what they have here as a type of way to brace the windlass in place. By slipping these through the holes, it can then rest down, rest on this block of wood, and uh, hold it in place without keeping tension on the chain. I'm being more and more impressed about the little accurate details, those little details that are just added here for the sake of accuracy that were clearly added in the reconstruction, which meant they really cared about actually trying to recreate an authentic medieval castle. And we're seeing it all around, more and more, little signs like that, which is making me love this place more and more. Case in point, right beneath me here is the, oh, well, it's covered right now, but you could lift that open, and this is the opening to the murder hole that we pass through underneath at the gatehouse. They didn't need to add this in. This castle was reconstructed in the 19th century when it was not gonna serve any military purpose, but they added in the murder hole for the sake of accuracy. Now, you know, more likely it should have been a murder slot, um, as we saw on Kefili Castle, but still that they went this far to add in at least one murder hole, and there's another one back there actually, shows you the care that they did have in reconstructing this castle to be as accurate as they were able to do with their own knowledge and ability. And it's phenomenal, I love it. Oh, another thing, what we see here, right here is the counterweight. This is the counterweight resting here on a chain going up, connected here to the portcullis, which makes it a lot lighter to be able to lift and lower using the windlass. Oh, this is just phenomenal. Now, there is an odd feature in this room, um, and it's right over here. They have a fireplace. I'm not sure if this would have been on the original castle because this is not a living area. This is where servants, even uh, men-at-arms and stuff, would have been stationed to raise and lower a stand on guard, uh, men in times of a battle. Now maybe there was a, a fireplace here just for additional comfort for the servants. I guess they would have been grateful for it. It's not generally something you see in rooms that are meant for pure utility and function. Fireplaces are usually reserved to living areas, but very nice to see here. And something also really cool, look at the big thick corbels that the floor above us is resting on, exactly as it should be. So we're in the uppermost room of the right tower. So if you're looking at the castle from the front, there's a tower on the right, this is the top room. And in actual fact, the battlement for this tower rings this room all along the outside. And so it's an interesting example of not every room Need, was you know desired to be elaborately painted and stuff like that but at bare minimum it does have this plaster and whitewash should be said though castles and we see this in art did have bare stone in some instances so when i'm saying that oftentimes and most times there was a whitewash on them that is true but it, i don't want people to take that too far to think that there was no bare stone on castles. We see a lot of examples in medieval art that did have the bare stone, but what it was was usually dressed stone, very finely cut, 
fitted and it looked smooth, okay? It wasn't just rough kind of bits of different size uh, stone blocks with mortar in between. It was actually, when it's shown in art, the bare stone always looked very nice. And if it didn't look nice, that's when they would plaster and whitewash. And if it wasn't an important room, well, just something plain like this would have been perfectly accurate. And so here is an interesting example where windows like this, perfectly fine because one, the wall is much, much thinner here because we're at the very top. So it doesn't need the support underneath. And we have the battlement outside of it. And so because these aren't facing the outside battlement, well, you can get away with big, bigger windows. And we actually have a good number of them letting in a decent amount of light. Uh, and then of course, they might not have had glass on them, but a wooden shutter to keep the elements out. And uh, this room could have been used for any number of reasons. I mean, it still has a little hearth over here. And so very well could have been a bedroom. And if a bedroom, any number of uses in terms of who was living in here. So it could have been a relative, an important servant, chamberlain's quarters, and, uh, and that might then well house his entire family, a guest room, or any number of those options. We're now standing in the uppermost room of the right side tower, literally above that kind of plain whitewashed room that we were down just before. And you can see the angle of the roof coming in. The, the roof is on such a high angle that it provides enough space to have an entire room. This uh, was designated in the reconstruction as actually the chapel. So a lot of castles had internal chapels and this was one of them. And if this was being the chapel um, in the reconstruction, you would expect to have a large cross somewhere, a place to kneel, to pray. And so clearly probably didn't look like this. I'm not sure about the chairs here. Maybe, maybe not. Now, I do not know if the original 13th century castle that this was a reconstruction of had the chapel located here. I have no idea or point of reference, but it was very common to have chapels inside castles. So I'm standing in the kitchen of Koch Castle here, and it's actually on the second level of the rearmost tower, which is a little odd because kitchens are usually on the lowest level of castles. It's clear why they put the kitchen here in the reconstruction, because right through these windows is actually the feasting hall or great hall. And so they would prepare the food and then they'd be able to place it here and the servants could take them and then serve the food for the Lord. And so I'm not confident that this is the actual location where the kitchen would have been in the 13th century castle. And there's a couple of interesting things here and there. For instance, look at this big cast iron uh, wood fire oven. Not a medieval thing. Uh, the uh, ovens are, of course, built into the stone itself on medieval castles. And uh, the other storage built into the walls, that actually might have some validity here because even in um, Chepstow Castle, we saw some kind of alcoves that were too small for uh, much other things, but they were clearly like storage, you know, alcoves, and they would have had, you know, wooden doors and panels on them like that. The inside of Koch Castle honestly blew me away. It was far more authentically and accurately medieval than I was expecting, which is amazing. And it is doing one of the things that I actually have wanted to see for a while, which makes this castle one of my all time favorite. What is it doing? It's actually giving a more accurate window to what medieval castles actually looked like in the medieval period by having the walls still plastered and painted with all these colors and murals. It, it's absolutely wonderful. This is a closer representation of a medieval castle in period, what it looks like, than even a lot of surviving castles because out of respect to keep the, uh, the ruins intact, the people don't really decorate them what they were like in the medieval period. And so, yeah, I totally loved the castles that we've seen like Chepstow and Caerphilly, but this one in particular already has a special place for me because of what it's doing. It's showing what castles were like in the medieval period. It's, it's exactly the kind of thing that I want to build on the Shadlands. And uh, if I had an obscene amount of money, I could almost just build, I would want to try and build this one for one on the Shadlands. It is, I love so much about it. I love its um, asymmetrical design and, and I love the interiors. It is just wonderful. 
one of my favorites. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for joining uh, me in this video. If you haven't seen the video where we analyze the exterior design of Koch Castle, do go check that one out. I hope to see you there. And until that time, farewell.